Hello everyone, CryptoLemon speaking. Today is October 10th and if you woke up, you probably saw that Bitcoin is on the rise. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about Wi-Fi and his uh, creator, André Cronier. We're going to talk about Robinhood, and, uh, which seems to have some issues with customer service. Uh, we're going to talk about Spain, a uh, current initiative made by some uh, Spanish people. Uh, we're going to also talk about how the U.S. presidential election might affect the price of Bitcoin. So first of all, Bitcoin crossed uh, quite strongly uh, the 11K mark. It's at 11.3K. Ethereum is at $370. What was the reason? The reason we'll talk about it just a bit. Uh, just to talk about Bitcoin, it was sitting in this triangle that a lot of people were uh, showing. It clearly... Uh, went upward and what people are looking out now is the volume because the volume has been quite uh, weak over the past uh, months and if we do not get more volume people think this could maybe not hold we're also looking at ether that looks really bullish at the moment but beware beware because all of this happened not because of uh, square or all the thing it happened because of a stimulus that we'll talk about a bit later. Uh, Yuan Finance creator André Cogne says he's quit DeFi. So this is, if you remember, if you've been listening a few weeks ago when there was a hack, I was quite, let's say, uh, astonished by the fact that in just a few hours, uh, YFI and André Cogne said he will um, give uh, 8 million back to the people from the treasure fund. From the hacks that I don't even understand why people you will need to give back money as it was uh, not even audited and not even live protocols that he launched. I also didn't understand how we allowed people to join this, even if he claimed many times that it's not been audited, that it's risky. But why would you still like launch it and uh, make the address available to other people and then market the fact that it was risky? And then, oh, few days later, oh, a hack with somebody that stole most of the fund. This is quite odd to me. And the reaction like going dark just after this and not talking and not leaving Wi-Fi. I don't know, something seems really smelly. Maybe I'm being over, let's say, uh, on the conspiracy theory side, but just the fact that uh, then he blames that the community was toxic, that he got death threat. I mean, I mean, you've been in the space for years. You know, you know this is how it works, especially if you're going to do some digit farming, non audited protocol. So uh, apparently a thing that was really interesting in this article was the fact that uh, let me find the sentence. Yes, uh, Kronje told Coindesk on October 1st that he had informed the staff he was leaving some time ago. You need, we need to define this, but he was clearly frustrated by something that had happened in the previous 40, 24 hours. So the hack of his eminence uh, token actually happened after he already told the Wi-Fi team he wanted to leave. Uh, okay, uh, I guess. Uh, and then he blamed this kind of uh, reaction from the community and death threat for the fact that he's now stopping to develop. But uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Wi-Fi has a lot, a lot, a lot of, uh, you see, you see some tweets, for example, uh, do you want me to make it uh, with a light paper or just surprise me? Like it's, it's almost teasing for people to gamble in this, even if he's of course telling them it's going to be super risky. Uh, but the Wi-Fi team is very strong. They have a lot of core developers, so this is not an issue. I was just more referring to the fact that I think it's a kind of a exit for André Cronier and that it's going to be happy with some money. Uh, Robinhood traders, including Bitcoin holder, left in the lurk following theft. So, so this is no hack. This is just people like uh, finding passwords of some Robinhood traders. And what they've been doing is that they cannot transfer the money out of the platform, but they can sell the assets and then withdraw with Revolut cards or other cards. And what's been more, let's say, interesting is that the fact that Robinhood customer support seems to be an existent as this user, Bill Herleff from Connecticut, just said that he lost $5,000 with somebody withdrawing the money he had on his Robinhood account uh, after he stole the password. And uh, he just waited for a few, it was two weeks, two weeks to have an answer. 
just just crazy to me so robin hood i hope you're gonna fix this because a lot of people are accessing crypto or stock investment through your app so get some decent customer service please spend lawmakers get bitcoin but there's a catch so this was a, a spanish uh, cryptocurrency companies that sent uh, one euro worth of bitcoin to every congress uh, spanish congressman uh, so this follows a uh, initiative uh, in the us uh, which was called crypto for congress where um, they sent 50 dollars worth of bitcoin to any congress member just with a lot of uh, also um, material to know what is bitcoin what a crypto how to use it so 50 dollars you can buy a round of beers with one dollar it's just like it's not worth the time especially for congressmen and women so uh, this is just a fun fact but uh, i don't think it will have a big impact how will the u.s presidential election affect the price of bitcoin so what they're saying they're saying same narrative uh, if it's a close uh, race and that we need to recount and everything with the risk of assets uh, probably gaining value such as gold and bitcoin so but be careful because risk of didn't work that much during pandemic so we should we should be quite careful but the fact is also for the market as a whole uh, people do not seem to be willing to put new money in until after the election so we could see some downside in the short term uh, also Trump that uh, walked away uh, the Republicans they didn't want to uh, um, make the stimulus there was a negotiation between Democrats asking for 2.2 trillion and uh, Republicans wanting to spend um, as much as 1.6 trillion dollars uh, they didn't agree at all on a number and so Republicans walked away and then Trump saw that the stock market tanked and that uh, his constituents were not so happy. So he just now is uh, in the mood to make a deal no matter what. So he just raised this proposal to 1.8. Democrats say it's still not enough. And Republicans are just thinking uh, they would like to keep it under 2 trillion. So this is what's, uh, what make, made uh, Bitcoin go up, basically quite easy it was just this news that made the big green candle that we saw a few hours back and so what i would just like you all to be really really uh, paying attention to is price go up when we have a news that comes in that was not expected or not as fast or not as much the thing is now we have the stimulus it's gonna be 1.8 maybe 2 not gonna move the needle but what is the next bullish news that can come, except companies such as Square or other uh, coming in the space? But be careful, because now the news of a new stimulus package with a check to every American is in the price at the moment. It's in the price. So don't expect this, this same news to make a, a long-lasting bull run. And what is not in the price, I believe, is COVID again coming back. Look at this trend. It's been going up and up. We are more than 330K new cases every day. Europe is the new hotspot. As I was talking a few days back, we are more than 100,000 cases in Europe. France and UK are having a really bad time. France now has more than 35% of all its um, intensive care unit beds uh, used by COVID patient is supposed to go over 50% in the next 10 days. And if it continues at this rate, we're going to be probably forced to do some kind of real lockdown and not the measures they've been announcing. So same for UK. This is, uh, this is something to watch. So this is all for today. Trade safely, be safe also. And I uh, wish you all a great weekend. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.